Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's News. And oh boy, do we have a lot of different topics to talk about, all extremely exciting. And listen, alright, I know the inside scoop. I know you're all here just for the FNAF news, so I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. I will quickly promote the like button and the subscribe button. They're both right down there. Just give them a click. They're extremely poggers. And let's hop right into the news, starting off with the FNAF U2's collection. I'm sure you guys all know what U2's is. If you don't, they're basically like Funko Pops, but they mostly do YouTubers and memes, and most recently, they've been dipping their toes into the video game market. And it was announced a while back that FNAF would be getting their very own U2's collection. But not only the FNAF characters, they all also said that games in the fanverse initiative would also be getting U2s and that they were scheduled to release this summer. Well about a week ago we actually got an update from U2s themselves. Someone asked for any updates on the FNAF collection asking if it's still happening and U2 said yes it is. We're in the packaging phase with the FNAF team so probably an October or November release. In a different comment they also said that the FNAF team takes leaks very seriously and that they can't reveal the characters in the collection just yet. So it really makes you think, if they're just making the OG gang like Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, why would they be so careful about leaking? Maybe these figures are based off of Security Breach and not the first game. I don't know, tell me in the comments, do you want FNAF U2s based off of the first couple of games and their characters? Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, The Puppet, Springtrap, Circus Baby, Golden Freddy, all those guys, or would you want a security breach wave? With the Glamrocks, Vanessa, Glitch Trap. I'm gonna quickly touch upon FNAF AR, not a whole lot to talk about because we are currently in the midst of their Scream Punk event. So far we have Clockwork Ballora, and then most recently we also got Aeronaut Toy Freddy. We don't really know how many more skins are in this event. We also don't know what's gonna happen after the event, if we're gonna get a new character, hopefully, or if they're gonna move right along to a brand new event. I touched upon this in a earlier video, but we do know that more FNAF AR merchandise is coming soon. Randomly, the merchandise store for FNAF AR got shut down. However, they uploaded an image saying more soon. We don't know what's being added. We don't know when it's being added, but we do have more products from Illumix to look forward to. And now let's talk about Popgo's and Docco's charity livestream. If you missed it, Docco held a charity livestream for the Trevor Project only a couple of days ago. It was unbelievable. It went for 24 hours. Scott donated 50000 dollars and we also got some sneak peeks at the brand new fanverse initiative game being made by kane carter pop goes evergreen we got a brand new artwork for the anniversary celebrating five years of pop goes and then we got a song that is going to be in the game called ad machina i'm not going to play the whole thing because it is two minutes but i will play a clip of it if you want to hear the full thing it's linked down below Then we also got a brand new room reveal. It appears to be some sort of arts and crafts environment. And probably the thing that I'm most excited for trading cards. There were three cards shown off. You got Pop Goes, you got Balloon Boy, and then also Witch Sarah. There's apparently going to be up to 50 collectible trading cards in the game. Unfortunately, however, even though Darko got real-life copies of these cards, Kane does not have any plans to make them official merchandise just yet. Hopefully, though, if people like them enough and if the game sells well enough and the merchandise on the game sells well enough, we can get these in real life. And finally, we have the most important announcement of all, Baby the Cat. Kane's cute little kitty is gonna be in the game. He looks adorable. Very wholesome, a great looking game. Let's move on. So we have a lot of updates to the FNAF ports being made by Click Team. On June 22nd, they put out a tweet saying, so the FNAF Ultimate Custom Night Update 1.01 .01 is pushed today for North American areas. We hope the European patch will follow soon. Ultimate Custom Night Patch 1.01 .01 is released for Sony PlayStation 4 in the North America territory. This update includes the following, added controller sensitivity options, added a pause screen, added cheats, moved the flashlight from A cross to B circle, fixed pressing on helpy, fixed all off button shortcut, fixed the speed of adjusting AI levels, fixed 
Faz coin sometimes not appearing, fixed missing sounds for Afton and Rockstar Foxy, fixed warnings showing on the counterintuitive side of the screen, removed the ability to cheat in challenges. On PS4, they fixed the AI levels being randomized on the menu. For Xbox One, they added keyboard and mouse support. And for the Microsoft Store, it is now available on Windows 10 and PC. And thankfully, only a couple days ago, the European update was pushed for UCN. On July 1st, they made a tweet saying Ultimate Custom Night Update 1.01 is pushed today for the European market. Sony of Europe has approved the 1.01 patch for UCN today and I have released it. You can see all the changes, I believe they are exactly the same. And then for the sister location console ports, on July 1st they made two tweets, one for North America, one for the European territories. We have pushed patch 1.01 for FNAF sister location on PS4 for North America and Europe following their approval. The update includes the following improved cursor controls, added a pause and option screen, and also added new sensitivity options for controlling the speed of the cursor. So that is all the FNAF ports news. Now let's move over to FNAF and Hex. So if you don't know, Hex is a brand owned and created by our good friend Darko's Games. It's starting off as a comic strip, but hopefully gets turned into something more, and a collaboration between his brand Hex and Scott Cawthon's FNAF has been confirmed, and we're getting plushies of them, and Darko on his charity stream revealed the first three plushies. First up, you have Bonnie the Bunny, and look at how gosh darn cute he is. He has whiskers coming out of his little snoot there, he's got a cute little bunny tooth, and he also has a giant red ribbon. He also has some buttons on his little belly, he has ears poking out from his head as a bunny normally would, and I think the cutest thing about these plushies are the button eyes. However, I think the coolest thing about these plushies is that you can take apart their limbs. Yeah, the limbs have built-in magnets, so you can take off the arms, the legs, I think you can even take off the heads, and it's encouraged that you mix and match the different plushies. He also showed off Freddy, as you can see, he's looking great. A terrifying grin, those beautiful blue ocean eyes. <laughs> he's got his top hat, some more buttons on his belly and a gigantic bow tie. And he even has his microphone. And then you also have Golden Freddy, or Fredbear actually, because you can see he has all of the purple accessories. Again, the giant bow tie, the giant top hat, and I think the most amazing thing that could possibly come out of this collaboration is this mangle concept. I think Darko said that if the plushies sell well, he ideally would like to make plushies based off of all the games. So if the FNAF 1 wave sells well, then he can make a FNAF 2 wave, FNAF 3, 4, Sister Location, Pizza Sim. It's a lot of games, it's a lot of characters, but hopefully we can get some amazing plushies like this mangle concept. Moving on now to the Freddy Files Ultimate Edition. It now has a official description describing what we can see in the Ultimate Edition of the Freddy Files. If you don't know what the Freddy Files is, basically it's like a guidebook, right? It tells you little secrets about the games, info about the characters, all that stuff. This is the updated edition and I actually have the copy that has all of the freaking fan models and all that stuff in it. If you don't know, the Freddy Files is known to have a lot of fan models and incorrect information. So hopefully the Ultimate Edition does not have any of that because hopefully they've been checking very, very carefully what they're putting into this book. Fans won't want to miss this ultimate guide to Five Nights at Freddy's, bursting with theories, lore, and insights from the games, books, and more. This all-encompassing guidebook concentrates material from the Freddy Files updated edition and adds over a hundred pages of new content exploring Help Wanted, Curse of Dreadbear, Fazbear Frights, the novel trilogy, and more. Fans hungry for fresh FNAF lore can sink their teeth into this massive guidebook packed with mythology, gameplay, and secrets to help unwind the twisted mysteries lurking behind the smiley face of Fazbear Entertainment. Delving into each game, players can map the animatronics' paths, learn how timed elements of the game work, and discover how to trigger unique events. Special sections throughout highlight FNAF fans' most talked about topics. From the alternate endings in Help Wanted and Curse of Dreadbear, to the new technology introduced 
introduced in Fazbear Frights, to the ways that easter eggs, rare screens, and hidden content can shed light on some of the more elusive questions in the FNAF universe. A comprehensive animatronics inventory and reproduced content from the Fazbear Entertainment archives complete this compendium, helping fans bring their theories straight to the source. All the evidence, along with every detail of the games, books, and more, is laid out for fans to explore in this one-of-a-kind guide to the warped world of FNAF. So yeah, the ultimate edition of the Freddy Files is gonna have info on Help Wanted, Curse of Dreadbear, and the brand new Fazbear Frights novels, as well as the FNAF trilogy, which is interesting because the fourth closet, the third and final book in the trilogy, is included in the updated edition. So either they're gonna talk about the graphic novels, or maybe Scott threw in some more lore, some more unanswered questions in the ultimate guide that we have yet to answer. If I'm being honest, I'm kind of hesitant about this book though, because while it does have a lot of amazing content like Fazbear Frights, Help Wanted, Curse of Dreadbear, it does not have FNAF AOR. And I know, there's probably not a whole lot to say about FNAF AOR, but it's still a mainline FNAF game, something that you think would be in the ultimate guide. And then also, right, this book comes out in December, I think, and it doesn't have Security Breach in it. Now, I'm not trying to connect the release date of this book to the release date of Security Breach, but the fact that it's coming out in the very last month of this year, and Security Breach is coming out later this year, and it's not in it? That's just weird. That's just weird. Okay, maybe I can understand Security Breach not being in it, because it'll be unbelievably new by the time this book's out, so it may not have a whole lot of info on it, but FNAF AR has been out for a year and a half. How is that not in the book? I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. But speaking of the Fazbear Fright books, we have some very, very exciting news. Coming from Comic Book over on Instagram, they say the FNAF publishing saga continues, as Scholastic has announced that the Fazbear Fright series will be released as graphic novel adaptations beginning in the summer of 2022. Each volume will include stories from different Fazbear Frights titles, kicking it off with Into the Pit, To Be Beautiful, and of course, the third story in the second book, Out of Stock. What? That's so weird to me. Why would you go from Into the Pit, To Be Beautiful, the two stories in Into the Pit, the first book, and jump to Out of Stock? Why did you skip Count the Ways, Fetch, and the second story in Fetch? I don't understand why they're doing that. I hope they- I hope they do all the stories, even though that is a shoot ton of stories. If you're announcing that they're being made into graphic novels, why would you select only a few stories to be made into graphic novels, you know? We still have a year to wait on these things, but it is good to know that they're finally being made into graphic novels. I think people are kind of split on the whole Fazbear Frights being made into graphic novels. I personally am very excited for it. And speaking of graphic novel books, the final topic for today, the cover for the fourth closet graphic novel is out. And my oh my, I just love this too gosh darn much. The detail on everything is amazing. My homie John in the front looking spectacular. So you have Circus Baby in the top left. A very different design than what we're used to with the novel trilogy Circus Baby, but she still looks amazing. Then you have a very, very detailed Springtrap William Afton in the top right. Funtime Freddy and Mangle are also down at the bottom. The characters look amazing, the cover looks amazing. From what we've seen from the previews, the book looks amazing. I can't wait, I think it comes out sometime in December. That's gonna be it for this FNAF News video. Thank you guys so much for checking it out, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.